Pisces, welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for February of 2022. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm Julia Mijas in San Francisco. Well, hey, Pisces, if this is your birthday sign, if this is your sun sign, then your birthday is coming up really fast. You're already in your yearly mop up period when the month begins. And that's the 30 days before your birthday. So you're already starting to feel your old year's themes departing and uh, begging for closure. And your new year's themes are starting to crowd in. And if that feels like a time of confusion, well, it's just kind of par for the course. Um, if you want to get a birthday reading to explain uh, any of the traits and properties of your new year and get you really started to uh, begin it in a, the best possible way, you'll find a link for that in the YouTube description below. Well, I want to begin by telling you that series retrograde is well over by now. And um, I think that occurs as some pretty good news. Series has gone to retrograde in your fourth and third houses. It started as long ago as October. It finally finished last month in January. And, uh, and now Ceres is finally beginning to speed up. Now you may wonder why does it matter? Because Ceres has to do with the things that connect us with the, with the, the physical world, most particularly how we manage our money, how we are a good steward of our bodies and how we manage our food and eating. And while Ceres was retrograde from about October 8th to about mid-January, those things got pretty messed up. And this happens every year, so it will happen again. <laughs> but, um, but this time it's ending and we're all recovering and Ceres is now uh, pulling ahead at a much faster rate. At the beginning of the month, Ceres is in Taurus, which is your third house. And so all of the thinking that you've been doing about money is, um, is getting things sorted out, thinking about things in your character list, characteristically like slow and deliberate and organized way is really helping the process along. Um, so a little bit later in the month, Series will move into Gemini right there around the 9th and proceed to spend the rest of the month in your fourth house. And so uh, once you've figured out all of your budgetary concerns and the ways that you're going to be running your money and your diet going forward, bring that to your household and the people that you live with and, um, and, uh, and get those thoughts organized in that space. You'll find that it is so much easier to do it now than it was several months ago. So if it feels like you got a false start there and you had to start over, uh, this time it's going to work. Well, Julia, I know you've got some news about Mars and Mercury and Venus. What's that good stuff? Well, Pisces, I'll begin with Mars. Wherever we have Mars is where we can be very driven. And all month, Mars is going to be in your 11th house. This is the house of long-term goals. They used to call it, uh, in traditional astrology, the house of hopes, wishes, and dreams. Um, so with Mars in the 11th all month, you could be very driven to some dream that you have. You know, maybe you're writing that next great novel or you're planning on buying a home one day, but you could be very sort of like preoccupied and very focused focused on sort of achieving some long-term goal. Now, Mars in the 11th can also bring up challenges with our friends too. Mars can be a bit of a competitive planet. So maybe friends are being a little more competitive with you, or maybe you guys aren't seeing eye to eye on everything. Um, you know, if you guys got involved in some group project together, that could actually really help get the energy out in a constructive way. Then Mercury, the planet of communication and mentation, starts the month retrograde, but very early on the third, it's going to go direct. Now, it's been in your 11th house retrograde for a while. I really covered the 11th house a lot and Mercury in there in last month's video. But by the 14th, Mercury is going to jump into your 12th house. And the 12th house is a very secluded house. It's kind of a mystical house a lot, too. And Mercury has a lot to do with our, our thoughts as well as our uh, communication, even writing. So with Mercury in the 12th for pretty much half the month from February 14th on, you know, this could be a wonderful time for doing writing 
writing in isolation or doing any type of fantasy or spiritual writing, maybe doing some dream journaling would be great now. Mercury in the 12th tends to like to keep their thoughts to themselves. You know, the 12th is very isolated and it's kind of like you're, you're a little less willing to kind of share what's on your mind with other people, um, which is fair enough. <laughs> and then <laughs> Venus, um, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships has just finished her retrograde cycle at like the very last days of January. So we're still reverberating from it a bit um, while Venus is moving slow in the sky. But now is the time, you know, after that whole six week period, you know, there may have been some relationship bumps that came up along the way. Um, Venus retrogrades are time where we really review our relationships. Um, so there could, you could start be uh, making some forward progress in your relationship, especially if there have been problems over the last six weeks, um, but it'll be kind of slow and steady resolution throughout the month. Um, and um, yeah. Yep. So happy that Venus is direct now. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to, for this month's first uh, moon, I want to take you all the way back to January 31st, where this moon happened, which is sun and moon together here in Aquarius in the 12th house. Um, there's a lot of Aquarian energy in this moon. It, it's uh, got the feel uh, of friendship and tribe, <clears throat> but also quite a bit of um, emotional stoicism thrown in there too. We're calling this moon um, diligently cultivate the seeds of genius. Genius is because the moon is in Aquarius and it squares Uranus. Uh, very much the there's there's very much the ability to think new thoughts and to push the cutting edge of thought in, uh, in this moon. However, Saturn is, is, is saying, you know, take this seriously. Don't just, you know, leap outside the box and then go careening wherever you want to go. Um, instead, um, you know, be aware that the box itself has some value. So um, this falls in your 12th house which is a house of dreams and imaginings, a house of spirit. And a new moon is very much about new beginnings. And um, this particular one falling in your 12th house suggests that this new moon might be best uh, spent in solitude for you. Um, pulling away from the world, pulling into yourself, asking yourself some deep questions about um, you know, how do I balance those two themes of the radical and the conventional within myself? Uh, where is my genius? What is, what is the seed that I want to plant? And, um, and how, if I cultivate it, um, you know, can it grow up into something magnificent? Not now, but at a later time, because, you know, new moons, um, they're dark, right? <laughs> it's kind of the, the beginning. Then the other moon I want to tell you about is the full moon in Leo, which comes another two weeks later. And it falls in your, your sixth house. This one is on February 16th, actually. It's a full moon in Leo. We're calling this one Release Addiction Become Radiant. And the reason we're calling that at that is because the moon in Leo wants to be radiant. It loves to shine. And sometimes emotions can really run high when the moon is in Leo. It's definitely a rather dramatic placement for the moon. And uh, full moons already are times when emotions run high. And full moons can be very relational in their nature. So uh, some of the advice that we're giving about this moon is to avoid big, dramatic, emotional outbursts in your partnerships. And that's also tied to the South Node in Scorpio, uh, which is bringing in themes of addiction that need to be released, need to be let go of, in order that that radiance may truly shine. And also, it's really good to embrace the North Node in Taurus and Ceres, which are all about finding your way to peace and calm and stability. Um, because this full moon is happening in the sixth house, that is the house of work, health, service, personal organization. It's the house of the job and the job environment. So definitely, you know, let go of 
addictions and compulsions and find your way to peace and calm uh, in your workplace, uh, because emotional outbursts in your workplace will definitely get in the way of you glowing and looking good, which is what this moon really wants, <laughs> and might instead sort of position you as histrionic, and we don't want that, do we? So then the last thing I want to tell you about is the seasonal change. I like to report it when the sun changes signs. It starts the month in Aquarius and then boom, moves over into Pisces, which is your sign. So your season is beginning here. And this is, of course, um, your birthday month if you're a sun sign Pisces. It's a, it's, a, it's a time of the year when there's a lot of mud on the ground. The snows are melting. I'm speaking of the seasons kind of as pure metaphor here. The snows are melting into the land and um, it softens the land and, uh, and helps the land to reabsorb and process the nutrition that's left in it so that it can be fertile ground for the coming year. But this is a mysterious hidden process. It's kind of buried underground where we can't see it. And so um, this is the final season of the year before things start over again in Aries, but it's also your season. And if you feel like you yourself are a little bit mysterious and hidden at times, well, this would probably be why. But it's important to remember that uh, what you're doing and, and what you're creating of yourself is happening in a mysterious hidden realm. And, um, and it's up to you to occupy that in the best possible way embodying the best traits of, of uh, Pisces in terms of compassion and, um, and kindness. So this is the season for that. Well, that's what we had for you today, Pisces. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please do share it. And uh, you can find more horoscopes. Like if this was your rising sign, you can find your sun sign horoscope. Um, on our website, pandoraastrology.com and the horoscopes tab. And you can always find our horoscopes on our YouTube channel too, Pandora Astrology. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.